Welcome to chapter C9 of the textbook on sustainability management. This chapter is about sustainable business models and alternative forms of organizations. And with this chapter, we somehow approach a bit the, the bigger questions of sustainability management, if you can say that, uh, because sustainability management in general is about big societal questions. But when we're talking about sustainable business models, we have a look at how companies can be more sustainable from the very core, from the, yeah, well, from the business models, from the products that they offer and the way they offer it. And with the topic of alternative forms of organizations, we have a look at other forms of organizations beyond the uh, for-profit companies that are usually in focus in management and we have a look whether some other forms of organizations can be like potentially be more sustainable um, from their core and from the very uh, nature of the way how these organizations are embedded and organized. So let's have a look. So after reading this chapter you'll be able to first describe different types of sustainable business models and how they at least potentially contribute to sustainable development and we're also of course going to discuss some uh, limitations and, and drawbacks and you'll learn that uh, sustainable business models can be differentiated into eight archetypes in total based on the literature and these eight ones are number one maximize material and energy efficiency number two closing resource loops number three substitute with renewables and natural processes number four deliver functionality and not ownership number five adopt a stewardship role number six encourage sufficiency number seven repurpose for society and or environment and number eight develop sustainable scale-up solutions you'll then be able to explain challenges and barriers towards sustainable business model innovation and you learn that developing sustainable niche market business models into sustainable mass market business models as well as transforming conventional mass markets business models into sustainable mass markets business models is actually challenging and prone to different institutional barriers such as focusing on maximizing shareholder value which is prevalent uh, up until now in many businesses. Furthermore, you'll be able to explain the peculiarities of cooperatives, of public-private partnerships, and of social enterprises. Uh, and these three are the alternative forms of organizations that I mentioned in the beginning. You'll also be able to explain why they might be especially well-suited to contribute to sustainable development, at least in theory. With that, uh, you'll learn that alternative organizational forms do combine different logics, logic of the for-profit businesses with uh, social and environmental aspects in their organizational structure. This is why they are different and therefore they can be important tools to foster sustainability. Cooperatives first are community-based organizations which pursue the goal to serve the needs, the socioeconomic needs of their members. And then second, we have the so-called public-private partnerships. These are collaborations between actors of the public and the private sector. And third and finally, we have social enterprises. These are organizations that pursue a social or an environmental mission while engaging in commercial activities to sustain uh, this mission. You'll then be able to differentiate between different types of uh, business models for social enterprises specifically and these are four business model archetypes we have a one-sided and a two-sided value model as well as a market oriented and a social oriented work model and we of course will discuss uh, different examples of these models and finally you'll be able to discuss the challenges of different organizational forms as drivers of sustainability for example, social enterprises often face limitations in accessing financial resources and they're also challenged by their goal uh, multiplicity, these multiple goals, social, economic, environmental goals that they have and by the need to balance these different identities and stakeholder expectations. And there is, of course, also the danger of mission drift. So drifting from the more social and economic mission towards a uh, financial mission, which makes them more of a regular for-profit enterprises, this might be also endangering, for example, the legitimacy of these types of um, enterprises.
As always, the chapter comes with a couple of features, quite a few actually in this case again. We have a sustainability in business feature about choice editing as an approach to more sustainable business stewardship. So if companies limit the choices of their uh, customers um, on purpose, that's so-called choice editing. We have a very interesting uh, article that we discuss in sustainability and research uh, by Pasha and Santos, their AMJ article from 2013 on hybrid organizing. Then there is two uh, further sustainability and business features. The first one is about the Spanish Mondragon Cooperative, a really large cooperative operating worldwide with roots in Spain. Then we have um, the, the feature on fighting food, food waste with a too good to go app, a um, social enterprise, very interesting, that tries to minimize food waste. Then we have sustainability and society feature of about benefit corporations and B Corp certifications. That's a bit about regulating social enterprises, maybe making it a bit easier for them by having a dedicated um, legal form in some countries as well. And finally, we have a feature about Muhammad Yunus, he's a face of sustainability. He's very famous for his social enterprises. He won the um, Nobel Peace Prize uh, together with his Grameen Bank. A very interesting person on sustainability. With that, again, have fun with this chapter.